A question that people ask me a lot is why I've never covered Tub Girl on this channel. I mean, at this point, I've covered most of the big shock sites. And my answer to that is pretty similar to what my answer for Lemon Party was. That being that there's just not a lot of information out there about the image itself. That being said though, this being one of the biggest classic shock sites around, there is still a lot of lore around it to be covered. And I did come across something that may or may not tell us who was actually behind it. So for today's episode, let's take a look at Tub Girl. Well, I mean, not literally take a look at Tub Girl, because, you know, I like to still have a YouTube channel. But you know what I mean. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You ever go to watch a movie or stream a song and then you notice, hey, it's not available over here, but it is available elsewhere. For example, recently I was in the mood to watch Freddy vs. Jason. It's not playing on American Netflix, but you know where it is playing? Australia. So I get on NordVPN, travel to Australia, and wouldn't you know it, we get Freddy vs. Jason. NordVPN has thousands of servers worldwide. So whether you want to hide your location for security purposes, or you just want to look at region locked content, they got you covered. And you can do this on all of your devices. One account lets you secure up to six devices in any combination. Right now, you can get a two year plan at a huge discount. Plus four additional months for free when you use my link, nordvpn.com slash wang. Or you can just click the link in the description below. It's the best deal on the internet, risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. I guess it would make sense for me to start this video by describing the Tub Girl image. It's easy for me to take for granted that all of you have seen it before, but I was surprised to find out how many of you hadn't seen Goatsy before, hadn't seen Lemon Party before, never saw Pain Olympics until you saw my video. So let me try and paint as vivid a picture as possible here. You got a woman lying on her back in a bathtub. She's bent herself completely in half, got her legs behind her head holding her toes in her hands. She's completely naked except for a pair of white, at least originally white, stockings. And she's wearing a mask of some sort. Originally it registered to me as kind of like a Patrick Bateman sort of mask, but taking a closer look, it's more of a pointy 70s superhero mask, like kind of like a Marvel Girl type of deal. But most importantly, there's a giant orangey stream of what appears to be diarrhea shooting out of her puckered rectum, arcing high up into the air and splattering all over her face. And that photographer really caught it at the exact perfect moment. It's a very solid stream at this point, like one of those artsy model photo shoots. Which I guess by some definitions, it kind of is an artsy model photo shoot. I mean, not for nothing, taking a closer look at it now, people used to like make comments about how it's a very well composed artistic image, and I always thought of these comments as being a bit tongue in cheek, and for the most part they probably were, but this thing really is more well planned and more well composed than your usual smut. And although there's a complete lack of context around this photo, the way it's selectively censored seems to indicate that it's from Japan. So this image is floating around on the internet in the early 2000s before eventually winding up on tubgirl.com in 2002. It was that site where most people would become unintentionally familiar with it. You know how it goes by now, the old deal of you send it to your friend on AIM and they're like, hey, check out this crazy website I found. They're just like, fucking <laughs> just poop splatter on her face. And there's actually a lot of debate over where this image first emerged. Some sources credit the website Consumption Junction. If you don't remember Consumption Junction, the best way I can describe it Imagine if Rotten.com had a baby with Ebombs World. It was largely a mix of user submitted content that was kind of a mix of funny stuff and fucked up stuff. This is how they describe themselves. With all that technology and the internet have to offer, most websites still ignore the fundamental element that drives everything. People. And what do we know about people? People are fucking sick. Remove us from the trappings of civilization and morality, and we're just a tribe of shaved apes who like to fuck, laugh, and watch things die. Stop denying your instincts. Interestingly enough, the website tubgirl.com would eventually come to redirect directly to Consumption Junction, leading me to believe that that website was likely created by someone associated with Consumption Junction. Ultimately, Consumption Junction itself was sold, and it still exists currently, but it's just a normal porn site now. Although it's kind of funny to me that they still keep the vintage logo. Other sources claim that the image originated on Style Project. Style Project is a website that I feel like more of you are going to be familiar with. It just constantly found itself in the middle of controversy, often regarded, especially in its time, as the most fucked up website on the internet. 
So much so that it's actually the only time I've ever seen a website literally excluded from the internet archive. And at the same time, it had a big hand in shaping that early internet culture in a way that most shock content aggregators just didn't. It was sold in 2010, and currently, like Consumption Junction, it's also just a porn site. I'll probably go more in depth about the site itself in a future video, but honestly, I don't think the source of Tubgirl was either of these websites. Because every reference to them being so seems to point to the year 2001. Meanwhile, it appeared on Rotten.com in December of 2000. With the caption, it just shows how far Ali Sheedy's career has gone. That being said though, if you look at either the Consumption Junction upload or the Rotten.com upload, they each have a watermark that takes up the bottom of the picture. Later uploads of this image have the watermarked part of the picture simply cropped out entirely. But both of these sites featured the full image. Which means that there had to be an unedited version of it floating around earlier that both of these sites had access to. And in that regard, a lot of people seem to point to the Something Awful forums as the actual origin of this image online. And considering how much stuff, especially in that time period, would pop up there first before spreading everywhere, it sounds like a really reasonable theory. So it goes through the usual cycle that shock sites did at the time. You got people tricking each other into looking at it, people making reaction videos to it. The initial interest peaks in the summer of 2005 and then again in 2007. It was in 2007 that perhaps one of the most infamous Tubgirl incidents happened. It was on October 19th of 2007 that Tubgirl was posted to the front page of Kotaku. It would remain there for 20 whole minutes. Eventually it was taken down and Kotaku would issue an apology. While I have control over what our writers do and can control to some extent what our readers do, I unfortunately have no control over what other Gawker editors do. Today, one took it upon themselves to post a very inappropriate photo on the top of Kotaku using someone else's name. We immediately worked to have it removed, but thanks to the inner tubes, the photo was on the top of the site for 20 minutes. There are jokes. I don't mind being the butt of them. But I do mind someone ruining the credibility I have worked so hard to build and maintain. I apologize deeply for having that photo pop up on top of our site and also into your office, your home, and probably indelibly into your mind. It would later be revealed that the image was posted by Gizmodo editor Brian Lamb. This had all been a prank related to a Halo competition between the two websites. And surprisingly, after making his own apology, Brian was allowed to keep his job. It was also around this time that a second Tubgirl image would emerge. I mean, there were already lots of parodies and copycats, but I mean a second image that appears to be from the same origin. It appears to be the same woman in the same position in the same tub. But this time she's wearing fishnet stockings with red lace. And she's wearing a blindfold instead of a mask. Instead of blurring her vag, there's a piece of paper with a crude drawing on it. And the liquid is all over the place instead of one solid, laser-targeted arcing stream. Some theorize that the lack of precision and artfulness in this particular shot seemed to point to the fact that this was an earlier version of it. A bit of a not-so-dry run, if you will. From that point on, though, Tubgirl would kind of just remain in the background of the internet. A touchstone of our shared culture of years gone by, occasionally popping back into view from time to time. But then in 2021 and 2022, it would get another burst of popularity due to TikTok. TikTokers began to discover it for the first time through a trend where they would record themselves before and after looking at Tubgirl. And that all basically brings us to the present day. Now, this is a video that I've tried to make a few times, but I've just never been satisfied with the amount of information I can dig up about the actual photo. Looking around, funny enough, I found references to something that I saw described as an interview with Tubgirl. Only to realize, the person they were calling Tub Girl was Leah Beldum because she's in that tub scene in The Shining. But there is something else that purports to be an interview with the actual Tub Girl. Posted to the bike chat forums by Ariel Badger in October of 2009. Conducted by someone named Simon de Arte, who I could not find anything about. Needless to say, I have no idea if this interview is legitimate. But if it is, there might be some useful information in it. So here's the interview. May I thank you for agreeing to talk with us. What should we call you? Hi, just call me Tubgirl. You do have another name. Yes, of course I do. But you do not want to interview her. You want to interview Tubgirl. Okay, Tubgirl. You look much more normal in real life than in the image of you that most of us are used to. You seem to have lost a few pounds and are strikingly pretty. Thank you. 
The entire Tub Girl was a performance that we'd been planning for months. T.F., the photographer, had requested I should put on 12 kilograms for the shoot, and I hid my face in the famous yellow mask. What was the significance of the mask? It gave me anonymity. I could be any woman, your wife, your mother, your sister, and of course, the Virgin Mary. It protected and at the same time removed the me from the shot. It showed how we covert and dehumanize women. Do you still have it? No, it was stolen and is now in the collection of a Japanese businessman. What was the meaning of the tub girl photo for you? It is about womanhood, how woman is the center of life, how she nourishes, eats, and of course the valuable things that come from her body. The gush of diarrhea is symbolic. It is a symbol of joy and happiness. It is all about life and birth. In that one moment of pure beauty, we see the circle of life from anus to mouth. The perfection of yin and yang. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? One of the enduring mysteries of the picture is eugenitalia. They seem to be pixelated in an act of savage censorship. As I said, I could be the Virgin Mary at that moment. The desecration of the pudenda was a deliberate artistic act. Do both emphasize any deny me of the means of reproduction. I am mother to none and mother to all. Thank you. It has been a pleasure to meet you. This interview, if it's legitimate, seems like it's either poorly translated or transcribed from a video of some sort. All things considered, though, I can 100% buy into the idea that Tub Girl was intended to be an art piece. Like, even knowing that there are people who get off to this sort of thing, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that was made specifically to get someone off. There's just simply too much work here put into getting the shot right. Especially if that second image that emerged was kind of a test image. And if it's the case that this interview is legitimate, then I guess we know that the photographer's initials are TF. I'm not well versed in the world of art photography, but if any of you are and know of a TF who does stuff like this, that could be our guy. But that's pretty much all we know at this point. If you like this video, be sure to turn on notifications and check out my video about Goatsy. I'm out.